Hi everyone, Daryl here and today I bring you some exciting news AMD Radeon releases three new graphic cards we have RX 69, 56, 750 and 6650 they're all XT versions and right here we have the Sapphire AMD Radeon RX 6650 XT Nitro Plus and wow I'm so excited to show you the results because we have loads of benchmarks and loads of details to go through with this GPU but check this beauty out I mean this one is really outstanding and it looks quite amazing and after quite some time we're having a GPU on the channel with specific review details temperatures blah, blah, blah and everything so let's start with AMD Radeon software and everything we have from AMD first and then we're going to go with Sapphire graphic card now Today, as I said, they released the 6950, 6750, 6650 OLX-T versions, which are engineered to deliver supercharged AMD RDNA 2 experience. Now, for the 6650 XT, we have 32 megabytes of AMD Infinity Cache on 128-bit, 17.5 gigabits per second GDDR6 memory bus. Total board power is 180 watts with minimal 500 watts power supply recommended. Now, for all of those, the junction temperature is 110 uh, degrees Celsius, but in regular gaming, will work under lower temperatures for sure, and I'll get to that part later on. Some things that uh, need to be mentioned as well we have uh, AMD smart memory access and AMD Radeon super resolution which definitely benefits in overall gaming experience and higher FPS now for the Nitro Plus card we have premium design which definitely looks outstanding going with silver and black finish quick connect fans RGB madness as always and everything else then we have great cooling solution which we will go into details later on it's fast it's really fast comparing to the segment that it's placed it's cool it's quiet and the design looks really durable now you have four composite heat pipes that go through the passive heatsink and make the gpu really cool as for the pcb we have an eight layer 20 odds high tg pcb we have second gen angular velocity hybrid fans which are definitely something different compared to the other graphic card manufacturers and we have two ball bearing with quick connect fans uh, also we have dual bios with exclusive uh, software switch by tricks uh, junction temperature on this card is 86 celsius degrees noise is up to 22 decibels and tgb is 164 watts the edge temperatures uh, what they stated is 70 degrees celsius but we'll get to the temperatures later on in the benchmark part now this graphic card the sapphire rx 6650 xt uh, nitro plus has some cool designs uh, when we're talking about the whole chassis and everything right here so it has a dedicated vrm heatsink it has a diecast aluminum magnesium alloy frame and shroud aluminum backplate to dissipate the heat and i think the backplate also gives a special stability to the whole pcb board for no flex and to keep the passive heatsink from pushing the pcb board down and making the gpu sag now that's cool and it really does look outstanding now also we have a boost clock that goes up to 2689 megahertz game clock is 2486 megahertz now in some main features for the tricks software that you can expect you have tricks fan check you have rgb possibility to adjust the lights you have bios switch tricks boost with radiant image sharpening so all of this can be adjusted in that software talking about some general specifications we have asic navi 23kxt board power is 210 195 watts you have three display ports and one hdmi the complete size of the graphic card is 260 times 130 times 57.57 millimeters with 2.5 slot design and you have dual x cooling now it has a silent bios you have a wave fin design on the passive heatsink uh, quick connect fans which are really actually uh, cool design for a possibility for a uh, quick change or uh, easier cleaning or whatever you decide to do or you need to do 
and uh, the blades are specially designed second generation angular velocity fan blade in some terms of the chips uh, manufacturing design and everything else we have a manufacturing process on seven nanometers transistor count is 11.1 billion die size is 237 square millimeters we have 32 compute units and ray accelerators 2048 stream processors and peak single precision performance is 10.79 teraflops while peak half precision performance is 21.59 teraflops this gpu has one 8 pin connector right here so it's not in the middle of the gpu which is nice you can do a nice cable management it doesn't need an extra 8 pin so that's really cool after all it does uh, need minimum of 500 watts so one 8 pin is quite reasonable Right here you have a possibility to connect other addressable RGB fans, uh, LED strips or whatever. You can control it with the same software that you control the RGB lights here on front. You have a BIOS switch right here on the far left side. The design is quite nice, subtle, yet really uh, more into a gaming design. Uh, you have an opening right here for the fan to blow through the passive heat sink and immediately uh, getting rid of the heat. Uh, nice silverish design, Radian, Ceph Sapphire, Nitro Plus going all throughout and this is a really nice looking card. Now, and, and my presumption and something that is quite logical, 6650 XT will be based somewhere between 6600 XT and 6700 XT. Of course, that's only based on the numbers and the code name. So uh, now let's check out those benchmarks and see how it performs. Now I ran loads of game testing and uh, 1080p, 1440p, and 2160p going actually in Battlefield 5 on ultra details. Everything is on ultra details paired up with uh, 5600G because I don't have 5600X. 32 gigabytes of RAM, one terabyte of uh, M.2 SSD and a nice case, but uh, check this out. So in Battlefield 5, it scores 160, around 160 FPS on average in 1080p. In, even in 1440p, it goes up to 120 and in 4K, you get above 60 FPS. Now in Destiny 2, we also have almost a similar situation, 6650 XT going right in the middle of 6600 XT and 6700 XT with 160 FPS on 2K going up to 142 FPS and 4K 73.4 FPS. Everything is right here in the middle between those two cards, so that's quite alright. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we have loads of stuff of 124 118 fps basically knocking on the door at 6700 xt 84 fps on the 1440p also the same thing very close to 67 xt and 4k well 43 fps so this might be one of those games that it doesn't function properly in uh, 4k now pubg the, the fps show quite um, interesting results we have uh, 6650 xt going again between the 6600 xt and 6700 xt with 101 fps on average 1440p going a, almost 80 and in 4k 45 fps now in for honor on ultra details in all benchmarks it's basically by one fps lower than 6600 xt and this might be something uh, to do with the actual game but uh, 200 fps on 1080p 100 fps on 2k and 60 fps on 4k shadow of war so we have something in between 6600 xt and 6700 xt with fps going up to 132 fps 85 fps and 60 fps again we have in 4k above 60 fps in on ultra details Battlefield 1, 170 FPS really beating the 6600 XT, 137 FPS on 1440p and 85 FPS in 4K. Hitman 2, I know it's a bit older game but still really beats 6600 XT by 30 FPS. Then we have in 1440p 2 FPS difference with 84 and 47.1 uh, fps in 4k and finally far cry 6 it's really again knocking on 6700 xt with uh, 112 fps 81 on 1440p and unfortunately 42 on 
4K. Now, if we take into consideration, these are all games that I actually own, so I don't have any other games uh, to actually test it out. The, these are all that I actually bought with my own money. So this is quite interesting because comparing this card, the Sapphire Radian RX 6650 XT uh, Nitro Plus, it really does perform in some games even beating 60 or even close to 6700 XT, but in some games it just drops by a couple of FPS beneath the 6600 XT. So that's quite all right because in all other games it's quite straight in the middle. In all games that I tested in 1440p it goes above 60 FPS average and even in some games above 100 FPS in average. You can even game on 4K with 60 FPS on stable and that will be quite all right uh, giving you guys some enjoyment on 4k on ultra details, but I would suggest this card is definitely a king on 1080p and a 240 uh, 1080p monitor which will be quite outstanding and loads of FPS That will be quite nice in 1440p There's also a possibility for you guys to enjoy ultra details with quite nice FPS counter and enjoying the game with really nice details so yeah, I would say they, they stated that this card is based for 1080p, the maximum 1080p gaming on ultra details, but I would even say and even go with 1440p without any issues. Now also I like to stress test my graphic cards uh, in AIDA64 system stability test and processor here doesn't literally have to do anything with it, it's just pushing the graphic card and the processor up to 100% load which will give us more insight on the temperatures that can go up to maximum. So pushing this card up to maximum and having it on 100% load in AIDA64 system stability test, we got 58 degrees Celsius and that's quite amazing with this cooling, with this card and imagine it's AIDA64, it pushes the components at the maximum level and in that scenario it reaches the maximum temperature even though they stated it can go up to 70 celsius degrees depending on the case and all the details i'm having a chimney effect going inside the case so three fans are actually blowing from the bottom directly to the gpu and this is why i have 58 degrees celsius in aida 64 and you can imagine in game how it performs i would say in game it can go maybe even above depending on the case, airflow and all the other details that you might consider. But uh, then again, great temperatures, great cooling, great design, I would say, and quite satisfied with the FPS counter on all of those games. So guys, today was a quite interesting day because it took me quite a while to benchmark everything and to give you all the, the results that you need. Quite outstanding card, as I already stated, the design is just wow and I really love how it looks. So guys, as already stated at the beginning, Sapphire Radian RX 6650 XT Nitro Plus graphic card. Check out the links below about the Sapphire graphic card and of course where to buy it. If you're new to the channel and if you like the video, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future content and hopefully I will see you in another one. Thanks for watching today's video. See you next time. Bye bye.